Good evening, friends, fiends, and night owl supremes. Welcome to the spooky side of a bit late. To kick off this auspicious autumn, I'm going to tell you how to throw the best superstitious Hallow's Eve party, complete with rituals, divinations, and the most vintage decor. To start, gather your familiars, wrap up in a cozy quilt, summon a mug of your most comforting tea, and follow me into some fabulous Halloween rituals and party ideas from 1912. Games for Halloween Halloween, or Hallow Even, is the last night of October, beginning the eve or vigil of All Hallows or All Saints Day, and no holiday in the year is so informal or so marked by fun for both grown-ups as well as children as this one. On this night, there should be nothing but laughter, fun, and mystery. It is a night when fairies dance, ghosts, witches, and devils, and mischief-making elves wander around. It is the night when all sorts of charms and spells are invoked for prying into the future by all young folks and sometimes by folks who are not young. In getting up a Halloween party, everything should be made as secret as possible, and each guest bound to secrecy concerning the invitations. Any of the following forms might be used, but for our purposes tonight, we're using this one. Witches and choice spirits of darkness will hold high carnival on this channel, say Wednesday, October 1st at 8 o'clock. Come prepared to test your fate, costume, witches, ghosts, etc. The room or rooms in which most of the games are to be played should be decorated as grotesquely as possible, with jack-o'-lanterns made from apples, cucumbers, squash, pumpkins, etc., with incisions made for eyes, nose, and mouth, and a lighted candle placed within. Jack-o'-lanterns for the gas jets may be made of pasteboard boxes about the size of a shoe box. Cut holes for eyes, nose, and mouth in all four sides of the box and cover the holes with red or green tissue paper. A black box with openings covered with red tissue paper or vice versa or white and green make good combinations. Cut a hole in the bottom of the box just large enough to fit over the gas jet, turning the gas low enough not to burn the box. Dear friends and fiends, I don't think this is super applicable to today's electrical arrangements. Don't burn anything down though, be careful. In addition to this, jack-o'-lanterns made from pumpkins, etc. should be placed around on tables, mantles, corners, etc. A skull and crossbones placed over the door entering the house would be very appropriate. The hall should be in total darkness except for the light coming from the jack-o'-lanterns of all shapes and sizes in various places. Autumn leaves, green branches, apples, tomatoes, and corn should also play an important part in the decorations. Black and yellow cheesecloth or crepe paper makes very effective and inexpensive decorations. The dining room should be decorated with autumn leaves, goldenrod, yellow chrysanthemums, strings of cranberries, etc. For a table centerpiece, a large pumpkin could be used with the top cut off and partly filled with water in which a large bunch of yellow chrysanthemums or goldenrod could be placed. Bay leaves can be scattered over the table. Another idea for a centerpiece is a large pumpkin jack-o'-lantern, the top cut off in large points with small chocolate mice in the notches and scampering down the sides of the pumpkin, held in place by long pins or a little glue, and over the table. Place cards representing pumpkins, black cats, witches' hats, witches, brownies, etc. are appropriate. If one is not an artist in watercolor painting, some of the cards could be cut from colored Bristol board or heavy paper. The witches' hat of black or brown paper with a red ribbon band. The cats of black paper showing a back view may have red or yellow ribbon necktie. The pumpkins of yellow paper with the sections traced in ink or notched a trifle and black thread drawn between the notches. Any of these designs could be used for an invitation to a children's party by writing on the reverse side. Will you please come to my party on Wednesday, October 31st with the name and address of the little host or hostess using white ink on black paper. The dining room should also be in total darkness, except for the light given by the jack-o'-lanterns until the guests are seated when they should unmask. The supper should be served in this dim light or the lights turned up and the room made brilliant. After the supper is over and while the guests are still seated, a splendid idea would be to extinguish all the light and to have one or more of the party tell ghost stories. Have a large pumpkin on a stand or table from which hang as many ribbons as there are guests. 
have one end of the ribbon attached to a small card in the pumpkin on which may be a little watercolor sketch of pumpkin, apples, witch, ghost, or other appropriate design together with a number. Have red ribbon for the girls and yellow ribbon for the boys with corresponding numbers. Let each guest draw a ribbon from the pumpkin and find their partner by number. Another suggestion is to have the hall totally dark with the door ajar and no one in sight to welcome the guests. As they step in, they are surprised to be greeted by someone dressed as a ghost who extends his hand, which is covered with wet salt. Mm. The following games and tests of fate and fortune will furnish entertainment for children small and children of a larger growth. Of course, prying into the future with these tests at any other time, they might not prove infallible. But on the eve of All Saints Day, when all the elves, the fairies, the goblins, and hobgoblins are at large playing pranks and teasing and pleasing, why should they not come true? Walnut Boats Open English walnuts, remove meat, and in each half shell, fasten short pieces of differently colored Christmas candles for mixing holidays, each of which is to be named for a member of party and, after lighting, set afloat in a large pan or tub of water. The behavior of these tiny boats reveals the future of those for whom they are named. If two glide on together, their owners have a similar destiny. If they glide apart, so will their owners. Sometimes candles will huddle together as if talking to one another, while perchance one will be left alone, out in the cold as it were. Again, two will start off and the rest will follow closely. The one whose candle goes out first is destined to be an old bachelor or maid. These nutshell boats may also be made by pouring melted wax into halves of walnut shells in which are short strings for wicks. Dumb Cake Each one places handful of wheat flour on sheet of white paper and sprinkles it over with a pinch of salt. Someone makes it into dough, being careful not to use spring water. Each rolls up a piece of dough, spreads it out thin and flat, and marks initials on it with a new pin. The cakes are placed before the fire, and all take seats as far from it as possible. This is done before 11 p.m., and between that time and midnight, each one must turn cake once. When clock strikes 12, future wife or husband of one who is to be married first will enter and lay hand on cake marked with name. Throughout whole proceeding, not a word is spoken, hence the name Dumb Cake. If supper is served before 11.30, dumb cake should be reserved for one of the after-supper tests. Halloween Souvenir Game Suspend apples by means of strings in doorway or from ceiling at proper height to be caught between the teeth. First successful player receives prize. These prizes should be Halloween souvenirs, such as emery cushions of silk representing tomatoes, radishes, apples, pears, pickles, or pen wipers representing brooms, bats, cats, witches, etc. Screams Halloween. Flower test. A bowl is filled lightly with flour. During the process of filling, a wedding ring is inserted vertically in some part of it. The bowl, when full, is inverted upon a dish and withdrawn, leaving the mound of flour on the dish. Each guest cuts off with a knife a thin slice which crumbles into dust. The guest who cuts off the slice containing the ring will be the first married. If that wasn't enough love for you, the lover's test. A maid and youth each place a chestnut to roast on the fire, side by side. If one hisses and steams, it indicates a fretful temper and owner of chestnut. If both chestnuts equally misbehave, it augurs strife. If one or both pop away, it means separation. But if both burn to ashes tranquilly side by side, a long life of undisturbed happiness will be the lot of owners. What a dream, I guess, to burn tranquilly to ash side by side with someone. These portentous omens are fitfully deemed in the following lines. These glowy nuts are emblems true of what in human life we view. The ill-matched couple fret and fume and thus in strife themselves consume or from each other each wildly start and with a noise forever part. But see the happy, happy pair of genuine love and truth sincere, with mutual fondness while they burn, still to each other kindly turn, and as the vital sparks decay, together gently sink away, till life's fierce trials being past, their mingled ashes rest at last. Quite the spin on I burn for you, but I do like that. 
perplexing hunt. In this game, the seeker for prize is guided from place to place by dog girls as the following, and is started on their hunt with this rhyme. Perhaps you'll find it in the air. If not, look underneath your chair. Beneath their chair, they find the following. No, you will not find it here. Search the clock and have no fear. Under the clock, they find. You will have to try once more. Look behind the parlor door. Tied to the doorknob, they discover. If it's not out in the stable, seek beneath the kitchen table. Under the kitchen table, they find another note which reads, if your quest remains uncertain, you will find it neath a curtain. And here is where the quest is rewarded by finding the prize. Apple Seeds Apple seeds act as charms on Halloween. Stick one on each eyelid and name one home and the other travel. If seed named travel stays on longer, you will go on a journey before year expires. If home clings better, you will remain home. Again, take all the apple seeds, place them on back of outspread left hand, and with loosely clenched right hand, strike palm of left. This will cause some, if not all, of the seeds to fall. Those left on hand show number of letters you'll receive the coming fortnight. Should seeds drop, you must wait patiently for your mail. Bummer. Put 12 seeds carefully one side while you cut 12 slips of blank paper exactly alike and on one side of each write name a friend. Turn them over with all blanks uppermost and mix them so that you will not know which is which. Then, holding seeds in your left hand, repeat, one I love, two I love, three I love I say, four I love with all my heart, five I cast away, six he loves, seven she loves, eight they both love, nine he comes, ten he tarries, 11 he courts, and 12 he marries. Stop at each line to place a seed on a paper and turn the slip over to discover the name of one you love or cast away. Continue matching apple seeds with papers as you count until all 12 seeds and 12 papers are used. Hiding ring, thimble, and penny. Hide ring, thimble, and penny in room. To one who finds ring, speedy marriage is assured. Thimble denotes life of single blessedness, and Penny promises wealth. Pulling Kale All are blindfolded and go out singly or hand in hand to garden. Groping about, they pull up the first stalk of kale or head of cabbage. If stalk comes up easily, the sweetheart will be easy to win. If the reverse, hard to win. The shape of the stump will hint at the figure of prospective wife or husband. Its length will suggest age. If much soil clings to it, life partner will be rich. If not, poor. Finally, stump is carried home and hung over door. First person outside of the family who passes under it will bear a name whose initial is the same as that of the sweetheart. This is a multi-step process to find out your sweetheart. It's a lot of little divination tricks, but if it's anything like pulling berries off the stump, just a little bit of pressure will do it, and if it doesn't come off, it doesn't want to, so move on. I guess that applies to more than berries. Thanks, Grandma. Nuts to crack. Pass pencils and paper to each guest with the following written upon it. One, a dairy product. Two, a vegetable. Three, a country. Four, a girl's name. Five, a structure. Six, a name often applied to one of our presidents. Seven, every ocean has one. Eight, that which often holds treasure. Nine, the names of two boys. Ten, a letter of the alphabet and an article made of tin. Explain that the above describes 10 different nuts to which they are to guess. Now for the answers to those riddles if you wanted to pause and go back. The nuts described are 1. Butternut 2. Peanut 3. Brazil nut 4. Hazelnut 5. Walnut 6. Hickory nut 7. Beech nut 8. Chestnut 9. Filbert 10. Pecan a prize may be awarded to the first one having correct answers. Raisin race. A raisin is strung in middle of a thread a yard long, and two persons each take an end of the string in mouth. Whoever, by chewing string, reaches raisin first, has raisin and will be first wedded. If you try this one, don't ingest the string. Don't leave it around your cats, either, or small children. Be careful. 
I do not condone these rituals. Some of them probably are not safe to do anymore. Just throwing that out there. Use your best judgment. What's my thought like? The players sit in a circle and one of them asks the others, what's my thought like? One player may say, a monkey. The second, a candle. The third, a pin, and so on. When all the company have compared the thought to some object, the first player tells them the thought. Perhaps it is the cat, and then ask each in turn why it is like the object they compared to it. Why is my cat like a monkey, is asked. The other player might answer, because it's full of tricks. Why is my cat like a candle? Because its eyes glow like a candle in the dark. Why is my cat like a pin? Because its claws scratch like a pin. Anyone who is unable to explain why the thought resembles the object mentioned must pay a forfeit, which we get to later in this little to-do book. But of course, we're not done yet. The True Lover Test Two hazelnuts are thrown into hot coals by Maiden, who secretly gives lover's name to each. If one nut bursts, then that lover is unfaithful, but if it burns with steady glow until it becomes ashes, she knows that her lover is true. Sometimes it happens, but not often, that both nuts burn steadily. And then, that maiden's heart is sore perplexed. She's got options. Kismet. Take half as many apples as guests. Tie two long strings, one red and one yellow, to each apple. Place them in one large or several small baskets or receptacles on the table. The girls choose the red and the boys the yellow strings, and at a signal they carefully pull the strings and follow them until each finds his or her mate holding the string of the opposite color attached to the same apple. The apples are then to be divided between each couple, and the seeds in each half counted as follows. 1. I love thee. 2. He she loves me. 3. Wedded we will be. 4. He she loves me dearly. 5. He, she loves me nearly. Six, a friend forever. Seven, we must sever. Eight, we met too late. Nine, why hesitate? Ten, he, she is my chosen mate. Threading a needle. This one's very complex. Sit on round bottle laid lengthwise on floor and try to thread a needle. That sounds extremely uncomfortable. First to succeed will be married. I have questions. Snapdragon. 1. The dragon consists of a half pint of ignited brandy or alcohol in a dish. Be careful with this, I guess. As soon as brandy is aflame, all lights are extinguished, and salt is freely sprinkled in dish, imparting a corpse-like pallor to every face. Don't try this at home. Candied fruits, figs, raisins, sugared almonds, etc. are thrown in, and guests snap for them with their fingers. Persons securing most prizes from flames will meet their true love within the year. 2. Or Slips on which verses are written are wrapped tightly in tinfoil and placed in dish. Brandy is poured on and ignited. <laughs> the verse each person gets is supposed to tell their fortune. Place burning dish in middle of bare table. Four drops of burning spirits are often splashed about. Again, please don't try this at home. A lot could go wrong with this. You could get hurt. Pumpkin alphabet. Carve all the letters of the alphabet on a medium-sized pumpkin. Put it on a dish and set on a table or stand. Each guest, in turn, is blindfolded and given a hat pin, and led to the pumpkin, where they are expected to stick pin into one of the letters on the pumpkin, thus indicating the initial of future life partner. Dough test. Take water and meal and make dough. Write on slips of paper several names of opposite gendered friends, roll papers into balls of dough, and drop them in water. First name to appear will be future partner. Water experiment. A laughable experiment consists of filling mouth with water and walking around house or block without swallowing or spilling a drop. First person to meet you is your fate. A clever hostess will send two unsuspecting lovers by different doors. They are sure to meet and not unfrequently settle matters then and there. Ooh, steamy water experiment. The dreamer. If a maid wishes to know whom she is to marry, if a man of wealth, tradesman, or traveler, let her, on all Halloween, take a walnut, hazelnut, and nutmeg. Grate them and mix them with butter and into sugar pills. And you shouldn't eat nutmeg. There's probably a proper portion, but just don't do this either. And take when she goes to bed. And then, if her fortune be to marry a rich man, her sleep will be filled with gold dreams. If a tradesman, she will dream of odd noises and tumults. 
If a traveler, there will be thunder and lightning to disturb her. Modern a bit Frank popping in to say, Walnuts are linked to wisdom and nutmeg to prophetic dreams, but even a pinch of nutmeg can be too much and can cause toxicity and hallucinations. So be on the safe side and don't do this. I'm including it for entertainment and historical educational purposes. Stay safe. But no wonder it caused dreams such as these though, right? Cellar stairs. Cellar stairs is test where a girl boldly goes downstairs backwards, holding a mirror and trying to catch it features of him who is to be her mate. Around the walnut tree. Of all Halloween spells and charms associated with nuts, the following is one of the oldest. If a young man or a woman goes out at midnight on Halloween to a walnut tree and walks around three times, crying out each time, let him, her, that is to be my true love, bring me some walnuts, future wife or husband will be seen in tree gathering nuts, ducking for apples. Into one tub half filled with water are placed apples to the stems of which are tied bits of paper containing the names of boys present at the party, while across the room is a similar tub in which the names of girls are placed. With hands tied behind them, the young folks endeavor to extricate the apples with their teeth, and it is alleged that the name appearing upon the slip of fastened paper to the apple is the patronymic of the future helpmeet of one securing fruit from the receptacle. Game of Fate Guests take part, seated in a circle. Three fates are chosen, one of whom whispers to each person in turn his or her future sweetheart. Second fate follows, whispering a name to where he or she will meet his or her sweetheart as you will meet on a load of hay, or at a picnic, or at church, or on the river, etc. The third fate reveals the future as, you will marry her, him, next Christmas, or you will be separated many years by a quarrel, but will finally marry, or neither of you will ever marry, etc. Each guest must remember what is said by the fates, then in turn repeats aloud what has been told to them. For example, my future sweetheart's name is Obednego, and I shall meet him next Wednesday on the moonlight excursion and we shall be married in a week. Pretty fast. Candle and apple. At one end of a stick 18 inches long, fasten an apple. At the other end, a short piece of lighted candle. Be careful, maybe don't try this one either. Suspend stick from ceiling by a stout cord fastened in its middle so that the stick will balance horizontally. While stick revolves, players try to catch the apple with their teeth. A prize may be in center of apple. So you either catch an apple in your face or you get a face full of flame and wax. <laughs> Be careful, don't do this one. Where dwells my lover? Steal out unobserved at midnight, plucking a small lock of hair from your head, cast it to breeze. Whatever direction is blown is believed to be location of future matrimonial partner. I pluck this lock of hair off my head to tell whence comes the one I shall wed. Fly, silken hair, fly all the world around until you reach the spot where my true love is found. Combing hair before mirror. Stand alone before mirror, and by light of candle comb your hair. Face of your future partner will appear in glass, peeping over your shoulder. The four saucers. Place four saucers on table in line. Into first, put dirt. Into second, water. Into third, a ring. Into fourth, a rag. Guests are blindfolded and led around table twice. Then, told to go alone and put fingers into saucer. If they put into dirt, it means divorce. Into water, a trip across ocean. Where ring is, to marry. Where rag is, never to marry. Bowls. One bowl is filled with clear water, another with wine, a third with vinegar, a fourth is empty. All are placed in a line on a table. Each person in turn is blindfolded, turned about three times, and led to table. A hand is put out and prophecy made by each bowl touched. Water shows happy, peaceful life. Wine promises rich, eventful, noble career. Vinegar, misery and poverty. An empty bowl is a symbol of a bachelor or spinster life. Rose test. Take two roses with long stems. Name one for yourself and one for your lover. Go to your room without speaking to anyone. Kneel beside bed. Twine stems of roses together and repeat the following lines, gazing intently on lover's rose. Twine, twine, and intertwine. Let my love be wholly thine. If his heart be kind and true, deeper grows his rose's hue. If your swain is faithful, the color of rose will grow darker. Necklace. 
Make barrel hoop into necklace of bread, candies, red pepper, and candle ends, and hang horizontally from ceiling. Set hoop whirling and try to grasp its freight with your teeth. <laughs> Accordingly, as you like your first bite, will you enjoy married life. Again, with the teeth and the hanging tough objects, be careful. Winnowing corn. Steal out into the barn or garden alone and go three times through the motions of throwing corn against the wind. The third time, an apparition of future spouse will pass you in some mysterious manner. Also, you may obtain an idea of his or her employment and station in life. Dear friends and fiends, I do hope that was enough Halloween magic to get you started with your ritualistic Halloween party. Not all of these are appropriate, I'm not gonna lie. Be careful, be safe. If you would like to hear more, please do let me know. I have a whole bunch more spells to share with you, but for now, off to sleep and dream what you will, or stay a while and enjoy another sound spell or tale. Whichever you choose, I'll speak to you again, and until then, sweet dreams and stay spooky, my friends. Good night.